Welcome to another exciting edition of Dragon Ball Z. Uh, or not Dragon Ball Z, sorry. This is um, math problems. Uh, but just as exciting as Dragon Ball Z. Anyway, we are going to look at a few examples of what I like to call Inception-style math problems. If you guys have seen the movie Inception with Leonardo DiCaprio, where there's kind of this dream within a dream within a dream type of uh, plot in the movie we're going to look at and try to find math problems within a math problem within a math problem. So our first example here, and these are all kind of infinite in nature. So if we have the square root of 2 plus inside that square root, another square root of 2 plus another square root of 2 plus, where these, all of these square roots are kind of inside the previous one. So this goes on, and these little dot, dot, dot means this goes on infinitely, forever and ever and ever. So if I want to put this into my calculator, um, you know, I could do it for a while and get an approximate answer, but I really want to know what's the exact answer to all this. So in this type of problem, if I want to get this value, uh, what I'm going to start out with is, well, I need to call this something. I need to call this value something. So I'm going to call all this x, and I need to figure out how big is x exactly. Now, here's where the inception part comes into play. We need to figure out where things start to repeat, where dreams start to reoccur. And so if I call all of this x, well, if I look inside this, well, this part right here, since everything is infinite, uh, this part is pretty much the same as the whole thing, right? It's just a square root of 2 plus infinitely many more square root of 2s. If I just get rid of one square root of 2 at the very beginning, does, you know, if I take away one square root of 2 from infinitely many square root of 2s, is that going to make a big difference? No, because it's all infinite in nature here. So here is where the second dream begins, is right here with this, because this part right here, again, looks just like the whole thing. So what I'm going to do is make a little substitution. I'm going to have x equals and then the square root of 2 plus, but then here's where I said it just kind of repeated. Well, what is the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2? What did I originally call that in the first line? Well, that's just x. So where this is, I'm just going to pop in an x into its place. So now I am able to start working on this because I have eliminated kind of the infinite nature of it. I've used what I originally called x to kind of plug itself back into itself. I know, it's kind of crazy. So now, now I just need to solve this. So I got a square over here to get rid of the square root. So I have x squared equals 2 plus x, and then I'm going to move everything over to the x squared. And now I have a quadratic. So now that I've got a quadratic, I can factor if I can, and I can. How many times can I say can in a row? Uh, what is this? Minus 2 plus 1. So set each one of those equal to 0, and I get x equals 2, or x equals negative 1. Now, considering the nature of this question, if this was all positive square root stuff, I can't have square roots give me a negative value in the end. So that is an extraneous answer. So the only true possible answer here is 2. Now, you might be wondering, well, since all those were 2's in the square root, and it really equaled 2, what about the square root of 3 plus the square root of 3 plus the square root of 3 plus forever and ever and ever? Is that equal to 3? That could be a question that you could explore right now. And I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but it's not true. But you can try to figure out what it is. And I'll tell you what, whenever you get to this point and this problem over here, it won't factor. And so then you need to try to figure out, well, if something can't factor, how do I solve for x? And then you have that little thing called the quadratic formula that you would have to use. Or you could complete the square and go that way. A second type of inception problem. We have 2 equals x to the 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 x power forever and ever and ever. Okay, so again, we need to try to find the inception part of this. Where does the dream begin? Now, I don't have to, you know, use an x here at all because I already have x's in my problem. But 2 is all of this. It's this infinite sequence of x with x exponents. Now, here is where it basically looks like the same thing as this. 
This is the dream within the dream. But both of those dreams are equal to the same value. So I can say that 2 is equal to x, and then here's where I can say, well, that was really the same thing as 2 over again. So 2 equals x squared. Square root both sides, and the square root of 2, technically to be the positive and the negative, would be x. But again, we can't really have a negative square root of 2 equal to all this. So it's really the positive root 2 is equal to x. Something to explore to try to figure out if there are any particular patterns here will be what if you have 3 equals x to the x to the x to the x to the x. Is this the square root of 3? And I'll let you explore that. So you could try to figure out for, in general, any value in that is equal to x to the x to the x to the x to the x infinitely, could you figure out a generalized formula for that? And the last type of inception problem is with fractions. Again, since there is no x in this problem, crazy boy, here we go. Since there is no x in this problem, I'm just going to call this whole thing x, and I need to figure out what all this is equal to. Now again, here's the first dream. Where is the next dream that looks like the first dream over again? Well, the first dream started with the 2 divided by, and here's the next 2 divided by. So all of this is the same as all of this big part. And what did I call all of this big thing? I called it x. So what can I call all of this, which is still infinite in nature? I can also call it x. So I would have x equals 2 divided by 1 plus and then here's what I can call x over again. And now I just have to solve. So I could, um, I could cross multiply. I could multiply both sides by 1 plus x, which let's just do that. Let's multiply both sides by 1 plus x. Boop. And let's see, distribute that. We'll get x squared plus x equals 2. I'll subtract the 2 over. And this looks kind of similar to the other one I had, uh, but it factors a little bit differently. It's x plus 2 times x minus 1 equals 0. So I get x equals negative 2, or x equals positive 1. And again, looking at these two answers, I can't have x be a negative value when all of this is adding. So that's an extraneous answer. So my only true answer here is that really all of this boils down to 1. So you can make up your own kind of inception style fraction problems here. Switch some of these numbers around. You can make it look a little bit more complex than just this. But those are what I call inception style problems. Sometimes you have to say x is equal to the whole thing and figure out where does x repeat within the problem. In cases like this one, I already had an x in place. And then you just had to figure out again where the second dream kicks in like the first dream. And instead of substituting in x, here we substituted an actual value in of the 2 for where the second dream was. So you might see those inception problems. Sorry, that was the bell. And that's it.